A doctor of neurology with a rare neurological trait. His name is Dr. Joel Salinas. And when he tells his patients he can feel their pain, he means it. Interesting story. Boston 25 News anchor Elizabeth Hopkins spoke with him about his condition. And uh, Lily, he kept the secret for a long time. Yeah, you know, as a doctor, he was worried what people might think. And it's only recently that he's been willing to share his story with the hope that other people will take away a deeper sensitivity to someone else's suffering. For a long time, Dr. Joel Salinas felt like he was different from other people. When he finally figured out why, he kept his secret deeply hidden. When I talk about this, people either think that you're a psychic or you're a liar. I try to start from the science. Dr. Salinas is all about science. He's a doctor, specializes in the brain, neurology, and he's an instructor at Harvard Medical School and Mass General Hospital. I need people to trust me with patients and to get prescribed treatments. I, I didn't want them to think that I, there was anything less of me. Dr. Salinas has mirror touch synesthesia. It's a documented but rare neurological condition that causes him to feel physical experiences of other people. I scratch, he feels it, literally. I felt the, the kind of the scratching of your, your hand against the, so it's the left side of your neck, but I felt it on the right side of my neck, like a mirror. It's true of particularly intense situations, too. If they are gasping for air, I feel like I'm gasping for air. If they're having a panic attack, I feel like I'm having a panic attack. Before you dismiss him, I think a, a really easy interpretation to it is to think that, like, I'm crazy. Consider that you kind of have it, too. So, like, when we see someone get tackled by, uh, by a football player or fall and hit their face, that cringe that ooh feeling is that system becoming active. Except for Dr. Salinas, it is intense and physical. Science is only just starting to understand the phenomenon. In people who have synesthesia, the sense areas of their brains tend to be more wired together and they tend to activate closely together. And believe it or not, he says scientists think everyone starts out with it. We're all born with synesthesia and it goes away around age two. Uh, as we age, our brain is constantly trimming excess connections. It's kind of like getting rid of streets to make way for a highway. The theory is that in two out of a hundred people, that doesn't happen. I asked Dr. Salinas if he felt he has a gift. It took me a while to kind of really narrow in on this, but I think I would consider it a gift. Though he's come to terms with his ability, others with synesthesia can feel overwhelmed, choosing lives of solitude to escape the constant stimulus. For Dr. Salinas, it's not like that. In fact, he believes he pursued medicine because of this ability. And in sharing his story, he's hoping to encourage others to be more empathetic to one another. I think it's so important to think about what the world would look like if we didn't just think about what it was like to be in other people's shoes, but to also can reflect on what it feels to be in other people's shoes to then reason through that experience and respond from a truer, more enduring place of compassion and kindness. All right, so here's the thing. Even as you were watching that at home, people in the newsroom have already had some questions. We know you probably have a lot of questions. Dr. Salinas is the author of a new book called Mirror Touch, where he explains everything. But coming up, you're going to have the chance to meet him. He's actually going to be live in studio in our 9 o'clock hour. And just before that, join us on Facebook. Now we're going to toss it back to Elizabeth Hopkins, standing by with a local surgeon who can feel his patient's pain. A local doctor, yeah, a neurologist. And he's making news, Sarah, this morning because of his own unique neurological condition. Condition. Dr. Joel Salinas has what's known as mirror touch synesthesia. It's a rare and only recently identified trait that causes him to feel the physical and emotional experiences of others. You saw our story about him last hour. Dr. Salinas is live with us this hour, and you know, people had so many questions after this aired, so thank you for being with us. The first thank question uh, that was brought up was first of all, how are you able to be in a surgical setting if you have such a strong reaction to other people's physical pain? Yeah, as you can imagine, constantly being kind of in the place of seeing people in pain and suffering, I have to figure out a way to navigate around that. And a lot of that is just drawing attention away from the experience of the other. Kind of, uh, I have kind of the computer desktop of my mind. It's like minimizing that mm -hmm. window. And that usually means kind of looking at a spot on, like, in the room that is inanimate, that doesn't have facial expressions or emotions like a sleeve or a collar, or even just focusing in on my own body, like the feeling of clothes on my skin or the tongue in my mouth or my toes in my socks. Because if people didn't see the piece, what, what, how would you describe mirror touch synesthesia and why that's so important to do? Yeah, so mirror touch synesthesia essentially means that uh, whatever I see somebody else feeling, I physically feel on my own body as if it were happening to me. In 
and it's all just kind of a glitch in the wiring of my brain where I'm constantly simulating the experience of the other person uh, to such an extent that it's uh, vivid as if it were literally my body was the body of the other person. So one of the questions, another question that came up is, can you ever tell if someone is faking their pain? Mm, yeah, I think because of the mirror touch synesthesia, I can pick up on kind of more subtle cues when that might, might happen. I always assume that it's not that person's not faking, mm -hmm. but there are some situations where it's helpful to know whether or not there's um, nerve damage or not. And I had one patient, for example, who um, had what looked like a seizure, and I, they called me over to come and see her, and I immediately in my body reflected in, in kind of that mirrored sensation. It didn't seem like the usual sensation to have with seizures, and at that moment I was able to kind of lean in and ask her if there's anything going on, and she stopped shaking, and she began to cry saying that her best friend had just died and what she was having was a dissociative attack and not necessarily the usual type of seizure that we see. And it's because of this trait that you were able to identify that. You know, Dr. Joel's synesthesia means that he picks up on all kinds of subtle personality and emotional cues. While you and I might notice the look on someone's face and interpret that, Dr. Selena says that his impressions come to him through a series of numbers and colors associated with different personality traits. So I have to show this because within the few, first few minutes of you and I meeting when we did this first interview, this is the impression that Dr. Salinas had of me. Two is a, a two, a very strong two, and a, a zero. So the two is red, um, and two is a very kind of maternal, kind of strong feminine kind of a number. Mm -hmm. And then the zero, this is a very uncommon number. It usually means that there's like a, like a certain kind of specialness or extraordinariness to the person. <laughs> This is what I've been trying to tell you, Gene. It's first okay? Time, first time someone's called you a two and you haven't got offended. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, well, what, this is. <laughs> You're absolutely right, my friend. Um, so, we had to ask you what you thought of this guy, uh, because, and you guys just met yes. briefly. Mm -hmm. um, so, so give us kind of your impression of, of who Gene is when you, when you first had that interaction. Yeah, so my, my brain conjures up first the color of, kind of the, the grayish blue and an, an orange as well. And so, that grayish blue ties to the number four, which has kind of a calming, friendly personality. And then the orange color ties to the number five, which is usually a very grounded number with a strong sense of self. So those, those traits. Which I think is so true. So four and five, so I'm a nine. <laughs> <laughs> Laura? You take that how you will. Dr. Joel Salinas' book, Mirror Touch, is out now. Dr. Salinas, Fascinating, so by the Fascinating, way. It really is. Really. Thank you. A Thank great you. read. Julie, over to you. Oh. Sorry, I, I, I was glued watching the interview. I guess I should do some traffic. I need my clicker.